So it's been a while, but I got this is uh, ready for paint. Needs to be washed. And up front, I am ready for paint. Got it sanded as well as I'm going to sand it. So it just needs to be scrubbed. And I'll, I got some paint touch up in there to do. So I'm going to, uh, first thing this morning, I'm going to scrub the boat with soap and water and let it dry. And while it's drying, I have posts in my truck. And I'm going to build a shed for my boat, keep the sun off of it, some of the rain. So, new project, getting ready to start here as soon as I wash the boat and clean it up. While I'm waiting on the boat to dry out, I'm going to start cutting clips. These, this uh, hunk of aluminum I'll cut into little L brackets to tie the vertical post down to the concrete. So, two bolts into the post, one bolt into the concrete, and this piece of thick plastic fiberglass. I'm going to uh, cut into pads to set the posts on so they won't be sitting on the wet concrete. Hopefully they'll last a little longer. So these we cut with a skill saw, these we cut with a grinder. So I'm not sure what's more unpleasant, cutting thick aluminum with a skill saw or cutting uh, thick fiberglass with a grinder. Neither one of them is like an activity that I really enjoy. Um, I bought some super cheap carbide tip blades from Home Depot thinking I was going to ruin them on the aluminum. And uh, they did not hold up. I ended up going through two blades, just cutting this one piece of aluminum. Whereas the good blade I had on here before, I've used it off and on for months and months. So uh, cheap blades, waste of money. Get some good ones. So my oil parking lot's kind of uh, lumpy. In the corner where some of these posts are going to sit, tends to have standing water for a day or so after it rains. So I just thought it'd be a good idea to get the post up off the concrete where uh, they won't soak up quite so much water and maybe it'll last a few years longer. Well, aluminum drill is super easy um, but I did put a fence behind the uh, piece I was working on to keep um, the bit from uh, spinning the workpiece if it got jammed in the bottom because uh, that happens and it can uh, mess up your hand and then I used a pair of pliers too so it's trying to be safe here. And I did all uh, all my holes without incident, so good stuff. Okay, so we have 16 manly clip angles to hold the the um, feet columns down at the bottom. Um, I even sanded the edges because those jagged edges are hard on bare feet. They're also hard on extension cords and air hoses, so. Okay, I've made an executive decision. The first column is going to go right there. Um, it's on the edge of the driveway, which I'm pretty sure is the property line, but I never had it surveyed, so I don't know for sure. We're going to put it there. Um, this first pair will be close enough back to my structure where I can brace them up really, really good. The second pair, I can brace pretty good. But the, the front two pairs where the uh, T-top have to go under them, they won't uh, be tougher to brace, so I'm going to rely on these first two pairs to get all my strength. So I'm going to uh, anchor these two aluminum clips and then uh, put the 10 foot, no, 12 foot post here and level it up and then put some screws in. Using my old rotary hammer here to put the holes in the concrete. It doesn't really drill holes, it kind of chips holes. It has um, carbide edges on the bit and it kind of just hammers a hole and it spins to uh, keep the hole round and to get the dust out but uh starts off slow but once the grease inside of it kind of warms up it's kind of like me it gets uh gets going when it gets warmed up and it pops these holes out pretty quick i'm using just basic plain jane wedge anchors um, i know there's some new anchors on the market that may even be better i don't know but i've used truckloads of these things in the past when i was in heavy construction and I'm familiar with them so I'm happy with them. Um, the advantage is they go through the same size hole you have in your bracket and you just hammer them in and then as you tighten them up with the wrench the wedge drops down and tightens up and they're almost idiot proof very seldom do you have a failure. They're not recommended for vibrator equipment like when we were installing pumps and, and things like that that had vibration we had to go to a chemical anchor or set the anchors in concrete but for just almost everything else I'm a wedge anchor fan
first post is set uh, fairly level each way. I can get it more level when I put braces at the top. I'm going to go ahead and screw the bottom to the aluminum brackets and I think that will keep it from falling over. It won't be steady at all, but it just, I just don't want it to fall on the boat. When building a, a sheet metal shed or lean-to or any kind of simple structure with a sheet metal roof, to me, the main concern is not how to hold up the weight. It's how to hold down the structure when the wind blows because uh, you know, not counting hurricanes or tropical storms, we regularly get summertime thunderstorms and you can get a 50 mile an hour wind for a few minutes. So um, that's mainly what these brackets are doing. These are fixing the wood posts to the concrete so um, to resist uplift when you have a heavy wind because that roof will act like a wing and, and try to fly away. Witness a hurricane in South Louisiana, all the roofs are gone. Okay, so I squared up off of the C-can because when I set the C-cans a few years ago, we were pretty careful to survey them in there. They're square with each other and with their property line, or at least with the edge of the concrete. And I'm making the shed 11 foot wide. It's a little tight, but it's not going to have sides on it, so that's going to make it feel not quite so tight. And I'm trying to leave an opening as big as I can to still be able to get back here with their pickup truck even after I set these posts. So it's a compromise. Um, we're doing 11 feet and I'm ready to uh, anchor some aluminum and get the second post set. Now this will be a shorter one. This is a 10 footer. So we got the first two posts set before I go much further. I'm going to tie these two together at about the top of the secan orange and then put some steel braces back to the C-can and make these two posts uh, very, very rigid. We'll go from there. Okay, boat shed progress. I got four posts set and the two posts closest to the building, I've got a horizontal and it's pretty strong because I got it uh, notched into the vertical. And now I'm gonna weld that horizontal back to the C-can and put a cross brace on it because I want this to be as strong as possible. Um, the roof will be sheet metal. There's no weight to speak of, but there is wind load to deal with when you build a sheet metal roof and you have it up high and it's on these long spindly legs. So we're going to uh, get all the strength we can get from that C can and then transfer it this way. And I'm really tempted to bolt it to my neighbor's building, but I probably shouldn't. Or well, maybe I will. I don't know. He's got his vent overhanging my property line a good bit, but it was like that when I got here, so I haven't squawked about that. So we'll, uh, let's weld up some braces. Now, we're not gonna win any beauty prizes, but the first pair of legs is very stout. Um, they have a stretcher with a notch on each end, a stretcher with a notch on each end. They have standoffs to the C-can and cross braces. The C-can ain't going anywhere. So hopefully this first pair is not going anywhere. The second pair won't be quite as strong and the third and fourth pair are gonna be even more iffy. So we gotta give all the strength we can before we get out there. So yesterday I pulled out a plank to cut this board across here and I cut it 10 inches short because I'm kind of dyslexic. So I put it to the side, I said, that's okay, I can use it over here. So then I went to cut this one out of the same board and cut it 10 inches short again. So that's when you know it's time to go home, the sun has done its damage, and it's just time to call it a day. So this is a new day, sun hadn't come up yet, it's cool. I got some real live saw horses which will make things easier. I got a sharp blade for my skill saw. So we're going to put in a few hours here and see if we can't get this first uh, section all squared up and braced up. And then we'll pull the boat up and we'll put some more posts up. So we've got this big one ready to go up. It's pretty heavy. Um, I've been working off the back of the boat using it as a platform, but I think the best thing to do is move the boat out the way and use the forklift to pick up this timber. And it goes on the far side across the top. So the back beam went up um, without issue. It's very time consuming because you're up and down ladders. You, you can't reach the middle. But I got it up and I got it um, 
I'm using the neighbor's building's roof as a guide to get it um, horizontally level, to get it level, because I can't r reach out in the middle to put a you know four foot level, and these boards are kind of bowed anyway. So I figure as long as it matches his roof, it'll be good enough for my shed. And I'm doing the front one. The front one's much easier because I can actually pick it up and set it pretty much where it needs to go. So I'm using, I got some big blocks up top of the columns and they're clamped and then my goal is to pick up the beams and set them on those blocks and that makes them secure enough where I can get up there with a the ladder and and bang, bang and do whatever I need to do to get them exactly in the right place. Clamp them off and then uh, get the forklift out the way and go back up and fasten them with some screws which are temporary. Well they're not temporary, they're permanent but I'm going to put some bolts after the fact because uh, I don't trust these hardened screws for structural applications. All right, sometimes they go up easy, sometimes they don't go up so easy. That one went up just right. So I bought some two by six by 12s. That's gonna be my rafters. And I'm putting them up, it's slow go because everything's off the ladder and you gotta go back and forth. But I wanna get those installed as far as I can so I can put some X braces on the bottom of the rafters to because uh, this thing's so shaky or that first frame is pretty substantial being braced back to the C can so if I can X brace this off of that I'm thinking I can uh, get a lot of this shake out it's a new day got here a little bit early to beat the Sun I got my first six rafters set they just I didn't cut birds mouth or anything they're just sitting up there and I got them clipped um, they're kind of tricky in the beginning because they wanted to slide off. So I got a measurement where the top of the rafter overhangs this little beam. And I put a nail pointing straight down so it would slide until the nail would grab it. And then everything would be hunky-dory until I get the clips on. Now, before I set two more posts and go any farther, I'm going to put some one buys uh, diagonal across the face of the bottom I can't put them on the top because that's where my stripping for my tins gonna go but I'm gonna throw it up top I'm gonna mark it where it needs to be cut and then I'm gonna take it down and cut it and then somehow or another figure out a way to hold it onto the bottom while I either nail it with the gun nail or put screws probably gun nail it because that's a that's a one-handed deal and I got a nail I got a nail gun so let's see what happens I got it cut I slid it on top of that intermediate brace <clears throat> I got the far end clamped where it needs to go. I got the bow pulled out of this rafter because they're all so warped with this rope. And now I can climb up, get this end where it needs to go and shoot it, and then go shoot the far end. And then one by one, I'll get the bow out of these rafters and I'll shoot it. And that should, uh, it's not gonna make a rigid structure, but it's gonna make it a hell of a lot better. Okay, I got a system for straightening out these warped rafters. I'm clamping a block of wood to the diagonal brace um, and then driving a wedge between that block of wood and the rafter until it's straight. You know, it's not, it's not that hard to straighten them out, but it's hard to hold them straight and hold the gun and hold the ladder at the same time. So driving the wedge when they're straight, then I put a, the big C clamp on there and then I can get up there and shoot in a relaxed state and not worry about falling off the ladder. So only have a that one's done this one's ready to shoot only have one more to go so but that went pretty quick uh crisscross braces sitting up top i got it marked intersection is a little more complicated but not that big a deal so i'm gonna take it down cut it put it up and nail it and then i'm gonna move forward and set some more columns posts column posts post columns two columns or the last two columns on the wall side are set they bolted down to the ground and they're plumbed uh, side to side with crisscross braces. 
and they're plumbed uh, front to back with these braces that are anchored to the concrete. I'm going to show you a little trick that we use. Drill a quarter inch hole, put in two nails, a big nail and a little nail, and it will hold. It will not hold like a vertical load, but as far as shear, if you just set in concrete forms and you got to brace off to a driveway or something, you only have to put a quarter inch hole, drive the nails, they'll bend, they'll stay, you can pry them out later. So, I got these two set, and while this side's open, I'm going to set my beam where I can bring it in with the forklift, because I can't pick up those big beams on a ladder, they're too heavy. And now I'm going to back up and set these two outside columns, and set that beam with the forklift. So I'm doing this kind of backwards. Typically you notch the columns or the posts for the horizontal beam to sit on to take the bearing load. Um, here I'm notching the horizontal to fit around the posts. And I'm doing this because I'm more concerned about um, the thing shaking. I want it to be rigid, as rigid as I can get it. Given the uh, constraints I have, would not be able to brace those uh, outside columns. So the actual load on these beams is pretty minimal considering the size of them, but I'll, uh, I'll beef that up with some bolts later on. And I realized that this is not really a how to build a boat shed video because my constraints with the height of my T-top and the narrowness of the area I have to work with and et cetera, et cetera, all of this stuff might not help anybody else build a shed, but uh, this is this is how I'm building my shed. Maybe uh, you can get a little pleasure watching me work. I like watching other people work too, so um, enjoy. So the beam is prepped and the coast is clear and it's on the forks. It should be fairly easy just to set it up there. I've got plenty of room this time for change. Let's see what happens. perfect fit just need to climb up there and throw some screws in each end looks like maybe like maybe the left side can come down a little bit I'm trying to match the other one yeah I'll put one screw on the right and I go lower the left side and uh, get it down a little bit I'm trying to match that roof line which is probably crooked as I'll get out but so this is how you know your bits worn out as it wears the hole gets littler and littler until finally the bolts won't go in and you end up bending them so i'll have to cut these off with a grinder and i'll just move the post to the side a little bit and i'll put them back well there's lots of daylight left but uh this sun has done me in so i'm calling it got pretty good progress today i got the four columns set and the last two big beams set um oh and i got that X bracing set over here. So need to set uh, five more joists, run the X bracing to the end, and I'm gonna put another piece of steel to tie the thing back to my um, main steel structure. And then we can strip the top. I need to go buy some uh, sheet metal. Okay, end of another day. Rafters finished. Um, the next two X braces halfway done. So when I finish them up tomorrow, I'll take out these temporary braces and back the boat in. We can take a peek. So this is one of the cleats I put down with the economy anchors, just a little nail and a big nail. And I'm through with it. And let's see how it comes out. That's it. Two little holes in the concrete. Pennies to anchor it down. Those are those are real good when you're doing a lot of concrete forms. Well, the forklift is super maneuverable and it's really easy to run up there and grab the, um, the hitch with the ball on the forklift fork and start moving the boat around. But it is a little unnerving backing it into my new boat shed here because you can't see around the boat. When it's hooked up to my truck, my, I can look in my side mirrors and I can see around the side of the boat. But I can't with the forklift, so I just had to assume it was going to fit. Um, 
I can see the top though but I can't see the sides and then I didn't show anything in the video about my stop log but I have this stop log that I've bolted to the concrete and it keeps the boat from going too far back and it's got two angle irons that are bolted down and then uh, a landscape timber that's bolted to the angle iron so that I can't cut my tires but there's no way I can miss this thing and go too far back because it was kind of tricky when I, I've been backing it in here for so long and I never um it's very hard to tell how far to go but now I know when I hear the bump got it square tube on the inside has a column to weld to it needs to slide out a couple more inches and on the outside and on the outside I'm gonna have to put a three and a quarter inch offset to get it tight to this uh, beam and then I'll through bolt it and that should be awesome I don't have any um, freaking oxygen or settling so I probably gotta cut and miter and bend and weld it but that's no big deal so not only did I get the miter wrong the first try, um, I bent it to the inside of the line instead of the outside of the line, so it was an uh, inch and a half off. Um, but apparently I did, I've got no video of uh, bending, bending the thing, welding the joints together, and welding it in place, and drilling the holes and bolting it to the structure. But uh, you're just gonna have to trust me. It is welded. It is welded to the uh, column that holds up the building roof and it is bolted through to the main beam and it is um, a great uh, strengthener and then on the other side of the sea can I put a longer one it's at a funky angle it doesn't add as much strength as this one did but uh, it, it helps and it all helps when you're trying to strengthen a structure just uh, every time you add a little brace it gets a little bit stronger and that's what we were after is just to get this thing <clears throat> strong as it can be Make sure it doesn't come down in a windstorm or a hurricane or whatever. Right, things are looking up here. With the boat in this house, I have room to get my truck back here. It was kind of important to me. And it's not even that tight of a squeeze. You kind of got to be careful, but I can do it. Um, the shed is long enough for the front of the boat. It could have been probably another foot longer. It wouldn't have hurt anything. Um, everything fits. Now, I've, I've got... I've got this steel welded and lag bolted. I'm going to go buy some bolts so I can through bolt it. I got this one on this side and I got that long one on that side. And after I put those up, I took off all the temporary braces and it's pretty dang strong so far. When I strip the roof and put tin on it, it will only get stronger. And I'll probably put some uh, some little diagonals coming down between the posts and the, uh, the beam up there, which will, I don't know how much that will help. And I have room on the side to put a little, um, a little, I don't know what you call it, like this overhang I put on the front of my shop. I can put one down the side to keep a lot of the blowing wind, blowing rain out of the boat. And it won't affect me coming and going with the truck. So good stuff. Going to buy some bolts. This is probably a good place to end this video. Um, there's a lot of minutes left, so it's going to be too long for one video. So we'll cut it right here. Uh, thanks for watching.